Hi everyone, it's Helen from Witchcrafts. Welcome back to my channel. I apologise for my lengthy absence and I will talk about that more later. Um, but today we're going to have a look through my box of unfinished projects. So I've been off for a while, um, apologies for that, um, but I've not been very well, I had Covid and then um, it's taken me quite a long time to get back to anything resembling full health. Um, I also apologise for my manicure, uh, this is what happens when you let your six year old choose your nail varnish colour. It was purple when I put it on and it's purple when it's cold, but because it's about a million degrees here in Britain at the moment, um, everything including my fingertips apparently are boiling hot. So this is my box of unfinished projects and this is where I put things that I have started but I haven't managed to finish. So I thought because I've kind of lost my crafting mojo a little bit, we'd have a look through here and see if I can find something that's going to spark my creativity. Okay, so the first thing that's in here is a, a wonderful, I love this, this is um, a, I think they call it a flip-flop journal. This is made from some envelopes stuck together. Now I followed a tutorial um, to make this. I can't remember who it was originally by but the one that I um, followed was um, by Barbara from 49 Dragonflies um, and it's sort of a double-sided journal so it's got loads of pages. I think it's got eight signatures and lots of kind of hidden away tuck areas and things. It is effectively finished. The only thing I haven't done is I haven't done any kind of embellishments on any of the pages yet. I haven't started working in it and I was going to put some kind of closure around it and there's some lace in here somewhere um, that is what I was thinking of using. So if we can find that then maybe that's something we could have a go at today. Let's see what else is in here. These are some tags that I made. These are made using, I think the background paper is a wide roll of Tim Holtz tissue paper that I've stuck down and then cut into tag shapes and then I've embellished this with some washi tape and some stickers. But these aren't finished because they need some kind of uh, ribbon or, or string or something on them to turn them into um, tags. And then here this is a clothing label that I have also made into a tag and then there's a couple here which are from um, well I think I've just collaged straight onto a piece of card for those but we could have a go at that what else have we got in here there's a load of envelopes there's some journaling cards that I've made a start on what else we've got some envelopes here which are all sort of partially done. I've inked around them. These are made of uh, book pages, music pages, but they're just, they're a bit plain and boring. So we could do something to jazz those up perhaps. Then there's some junk mail envelopes here, which I've decoupaged with napkins. Um, and then obviously I was going to do something with them, but then haven't. Bunch of, um, I think this is old greetings cards. What I like to do, I like to keep greetings cards, but any that are sort of not overly special, I just take the um, front cover, the pretty part, off and then turn them into journaling cards. So I think that's what's happened here. Some of these are freebies that I got with um, Paper Gang, which is a sort of a stationary subscription box. So there's, there's those. Here's some more envelopes that I have collaged and decoupaged napkins and so on onto. This is a little flip out journal that I made using a file folder. Most of these things have been made using YouTube tutorials and if I can remember whose video I watched to help me make these then I will link them down below in the description um, but otherwise apologies. Now this, um, I really like it, I really like how the colours go together, it's a bit twee, it's not really my style um, but we could quite easily add in a signature into here to make this 
a bit more finished. Some more journaling cards here. This was something from some Happy Mail, so it's obviously made from a it's an envelope made from a, a children's book page. Got some stacked pockets here. Problem with these is the book page that I used for this is really really old and quite brittle so then that's not the best one. Ah, I wondered where this had gone. This is a little um, sort of inspiration book that I made and as you can see I've started the whole idea was to um, sort of make a compilation of all of the possibilities so that when I find myself in a creative slump like this I can flick through this and then hopefully it'll give me a load of inspiration for things I could make. So there's lots of different things on each of the pages. Um, I had a lot of fun making this, um, but then that's as far as I've got with it. The rest of the pages are just blank, but this is lovely. And again, I wanted to add some sort of closure to it. So that's a possibility. This is another little journal. Now this I love, and I'm not sure why it's in here because I thought this was finished. I made this using a tutorial from Louisa Heinzel, who is absolutely incredible. If you haven't, you probably have, but if you haven't found her channel, please go and check it out. She's incredible and so, so inspiring. Oh, I know why this isn't finished. It's because this tag I wanted to put here, but I made the belly band so that it's got glue halfway down. So now this tag doesn't fit. So what I was going to do was put some sort of little pocket or fastening on there so that he can just sort of peek out over the top of there. So that's definitely something I could have a go at. Oh, here's the lace that I was going to put around my um, flip-flop journal. So we've got that. And then we've got some more. These are Some of these are scraps of scrapbooking paper some of these are that you know you get those kits of ephemera from like Tim Holtz and so on and some of these are cutouts yeah this is um, from scrapbooking paper so these are just like journaling cards or bookmarks or something Got some more greetings card front pages um, some more tags these are like little notebook tags I mean these are all things that I could add into a journal I've got many and I've got my main one sort of on the go at the moment um, but nothing sort of really filling me with inspiration oh this is um Shinuki Art does a full deck challenge I believe she's on her third full deck of cards maybe second um, and I started sort of emulating what she was doing so the idea is that you take a pack of a deck of normal playing cards and then you alter them in some way and then hole punch through the top so that you end up with this full deck which obviously you well I suppose you could use it as a a pack of playing cards still but you probably wouldn't want to it's more sort of a um a display piece but again it's really good for inspiration there should be another one in here somewhere that isn't finished um, and then some more little like file folder flip out journals there's another envelope there that's just a partial envelope oh this is um following on pa uh, pam from the paper outpost this is a sort of a a bookmark with additional journaling space so perhaps if you're reading a book and you want to make some notes about the book and you obviously don't want to write in your book then you can write in your bookmark. So I thought that was really nice. Again, I don't know quite why that's in here because it looks fairly finished. A couple more little bookmarks, some little tags with some washi tape samples wrapped around them. More envelope things. This is a little um, sort of like a Christmas gift that I was trying out for craft fairs where you get a couple of little tea sachets in again just a bit of scrapbook paper folded up this is a little tag booklet i think so it's got a belly band on the front there and then you kind of it sort of is a bit of a flip-flop journal itself and then it's got these pockets in the middle 
again I don't know why that's in here because it looks pretty finished then I've just got some little oh I should probably move these from here and put them into my box of embellishments so it looks like there's some little clusters and some magazine images perhaps that's some bookmarks that I haven't finished some more little like coin envelope type things these are more clothing labels which was um, inspired by watching a book by um, Natasha from Treasure Books who again she's fabulous if you haven't discovered her channel then go and check her out um, just reusing old tags from clothing to make book plates and, and those sorts of things well, here's the unfinished one so five of hearts but obviously as you can see I've got quite a long way still to go with that I just I don't know if the same happens to anyone else but just get into a bit of a slump um, and don't really feel like doing anything well no I, f I feel like doing stuff I just I don't really know what to do and then I'll start doing something and think oh no actually that isn't what I want to do these are little matchbook notebooks again I don't know why they're in here because they look pretty finished I think this is another one of those little sort of flip-flop journals can't get the ribbon undone though so I can't look inside and see what's in there yeah, so it's just a, a bit of scrapbooking paper. I think it was double-sided scrapbooking paper. It's just some pockets. It's not a flip-flop, it's just a, a little... But it's got these pockets, so it's obviously folded in some way. And then these are a bunch of homemade buttons made from book pages. I think originally it was Jenny Belly who I watched a tutorial but I know that Louisa Heinzel has done um, tutorials on buttons and I think um, Pam from the Paper Outpost also did one on jazzing up existing boring plastic buttons but these ones are made from uh, book pages kind of stacked together and then you, you stamp on them and then use the, the glue to sort of embellish them not the glue, you know what I mean, the diamond glaze um, and then got here, oh I think these are from one of Barbara's, from 49 Dragonflies, one of her digi kits. Um, so these are just some like corner tuck pocket things. Um, these are some little bookmarks, and some little dangles on the end. Again, I'm not sure why these are in here. I th so I think what I need to do, quite apart from reorganising a lot of this stuff and putting things back where they should be rather than in this box is um, have another look back through everything and see what I'm going to have a go at doing today. I've picked out a few items that I think maybe I'd quite like to have a go at doing um, and I also have got my scraps and offcuts <laughs> drawer. I'm sorry it doesn't even fit on the frame but in here I've got all of the offcuts from projects that I've done in the past um, I don't really, I mean I don't keep tiny tiny bits of paper very often unless it's something very special but any kind of little off cuts um, of pattern paper or anything that looks pretty then I do keep because you never know when it's going to come in handy because sometimes you only need a really tiny bit of something and it's a shame to sort of break a whole page when all you want is a tiny scrap. It's like if you've got some money, if you've got a note you don't want to break into a £10 note because, you know, then you end up spending the whole £10, whereas if you've just got 20p or whatever. Anyway, you know what I mean. This is the reason I justify keeping all these scraps. Um, so there's a whole load in here. There's there's a whole pack of proper decoupaging paper there and bits of jelly plates, just scrap paper. So... I'm hoping that I can make use of some of this stuff in here because there's loads and it would be nice to kind of reduce it down a little bit if at all possible. So I think what we'll do first, move this out of the way, I think what I'd like to do, I always find it's really nice if you can finish something completely from start to finish. This is one of my biggest gripes in life is because my life is busy, because I've got caring responsibilities and so on, um, 
I never manage to finish anything that I start. So if I start trying to tidy something or make something, I always run out of time and end up having to abandon it and then go off. It's the same with tidying, making, reading, anything. There's always something which interrupts me and I can never actually finish a project from start to finish. So what I thought I'd do is, it's very satisfying when you can go, ah, oh, it's finished, it's done. I can put that to one side now and just admire what I've done. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to put something across here and I'm not sure if it wants it to be a pocket. I think actually I just want like a belly band across here because I've got this um, stamping here at the bottom which is quite pretty. The back of the card's quite plain but that's okay because I could write something on there or jazz it up in some other way. Um, so yeah I think we just need to pop something across here to just hold this little chap in place and then he can just be perched on the top of there quite happily like that so need to find a piece of paper to go across there so let me just have a quick rummage around in my scrap box and see what I can find I've got this off cut which is from I don't know if it's going to focus in there we go um this is a collage page that I made from some scraps again using a tutorial from Louisa Heinzel it's something that I maybe I could have a go at doing myself making a video on it where you take a whole load of scraps bung them in a box and you just spray ink and paint and coffee and all sorts of stuff all over them scrumble it all around in in the tray and then um, you stamp on it with rubber stamps obviously not your feet and then you um, can collage with it and it's fantastic and this is just a little sort of side edge of what's left so I think because this journal was inspired by Louisa Heinzel and this was also from a tutorial that she did I think we'll use a bit of this um, and also the colours fit really well so we just need where's the hinge the hinge is just there I might just zoom in a wee bit actually Still in focus? I think so. <laughs> I'm having a bit of a problem with getting my camera set up properly at the moment, which is very frustrating. Uh, there we go. So I think we need sort of from there to here. I mean, is that the best part of it to use? We've got the colours kind of matching quite well. And then there's that bit with writing. This is a bit thick. I don't know if I prefer that side actually. The tiny little bit of blue here which matches in with this chap over here so I'm thinking maybe we go for there I don't know if I'm going to be able to tear this because it's quite thick so I think I'll just use my these are great my scissors there we go let's trim, trim that off and then obviously the other edges of this are inked so I need to just grab my probably vintage photo I would think that seems to be the go-to it was certainly it was the first distress oxide ink that I bought many moons ago so we'll just ink around this I've been thinking actually I mean I haven't just been sat on my bum doing nothing the whole time I've been not feeling great I've been watching loads of videos I came across um, I actually typed into uh, YouTube you know lost my crafting mojo and came across loads of people that have also have done videos on this um, and one of them was a whole series that was done by um, Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah and I really enjoyed watching her um, videos and she sort of gave me the idea for doing this um, of, of looking at unfinished projects and then uh, trying to, to you know make some headway on them uh, so let's just re-ink that now I've just trimmed that again <clears throat> but yeah I was thinking one thing I was thinking of doing was a sort of a crafting essentials guide I mean I know a load of people have done that sort of thing before um, but sort of like you know if you are on a it's, you can tell how long it's been since I used this my glue has completely dried up 
And I had also thought, this is a, a dangle that I made so that I don't lose the pin. And I had thought these were stainless steel pins that you can see just about that it's gone quite rusty, which is a bit of a shame, but yeah, it's just a little, a pretty dangle that I made just so that I don't lose where the pin's gone, but uh, yeah. Right, so if we just pop a little bit of glue along the sides, it's all coming out a bit rusty coloured, but that's okay because we're not going to see it, so it doesn't really matter. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, um, yeah, I've been thinking about doing some kind of video about crafting essentials. So if you are on a limited budget, um, you know, there is so many crafting products out there that you can buy and, you know, a lot of them are extremely pricey and a lot of kind of commercial manufacturers I'm not going to mention any names but um, a lot of them will sort of make a video heralding this new product that they've created um, and you know making a whole big song and dance about it when you know to be honest you don't need much to be able to do this because it is junk journaling at the end of the day and very little of the things that you see here on my desk right now in terms of the paper products very little of it has been purchased um a lot of it i've made myself i've downloaded for free off the internet um or you know i've just made use of other things i mean you saw me make a journal out of a box that ice creams came in so you know you can do it with anything so there we do oh, this glue is not wanting to stick it's cause, i think it's because it's going onto fabric again i had this problem last time if you remember with this glue not wanting to stick or was that the other one I thought no, actually and that might have been the three in one sorry I'm wittering there we go so I think we can call this done now so this one is now finished and I absolutely love this I remember having so much fun making it it was just so lovely because I tried to sort of go along with what Louisa was showing as much as possible um, and I didn't have some of the components that I needed so I had to find them or make them or what have you and I just remember having so much fun and it was completely something I hadn't really done before with all the kind of the messy sewing and the scrunched edges and yeah it was fabulous so I will definitely link that video down below for you because I think this is something that you know could really inspire anybody right what should we do next okay um i think well, i've picked out these little envelopes because i was thinking i'd have a go at doing something with these just to sort of jazz them up a little bit I'm not too sure what you'd do with this because this is you know, it's double sided so you could make it into like a little pocket but then I suppose you'd have to glue one side or the other down I'm not sure about that one so these are ones that I made actually I made a collage sheet then I scanned it in and then this is a printout onto card of that um, collage page that I did and I think it looks pretty cool actually um, so I could do something with these guys I'm not sure what they need they just they need something on the flaps I think perhaps we can put like another butterfly on top of this guy but kind of raised up so that it's a bit more three-dimensional and then these ones could do with some sort of little clusters or something or we could do a closure perhaps that would be a possibility as well I've got those little tiny embellishments that I found in my box so have a look see if there's anything in here that we could use so these are just oh I see what these are these are tags so commercially bought tags um, I don't have a tag shape stamping uh, not stamping you know hole punch 
um, or die cut or anything. So these are just collaged tags. That's what these are. I've forgotten I made these. I quite like them actually. I think they're quite pretty. I quite like the kind of um, vintage vibe that's going on there. They're really nice. I like that with the sort of the overhanging bits on the sides and there's bits of lace and little gemstones. I must have followed a tutorial to do this but I don't recall what it was I'm afraid. So okay so they, we can't use those but I've got some little tiny tiny embellishments here so let's see if I can use any of these. So these are just cut out from magazines stuck down onto some paper book page um, I've got those that's quite a nice little image I'm not sure what's going on here so there's a few oh there's some little flower things what's this principality de monaco oh okay so that's like a um, passport stamp thing i haven't been to monaco sadly it's not mine Okay, so, right, let's start with this one. No, not this one, this one. So we could just perhaps put something on the front. That's quite nice. And if we put it in the middle, we could perhaps put a little bit of Velcro or something under there to help hold it shut. Um, the back of it, it's very plain though so I kind of think we need to put something on the back because obviously when you open it you're going to see but you can also see my pencil lines on the back there right so I think what we need to do is we need to cover this inside flap and we also need to cover this and I've also noticed that my corner here I don't know if you can see it's not very round so I'll find my corner part oh there it is find my corner punch Oh, and just make that look a bit that's better um lost a little bit of inking on the side there i wonder what color i would have used there would i have used i think i would have used one of my pinks let's see is it this one this is abandoned coral hmm, i think that's quite red actually maybe it's the other one this one yes right now i need to find the dobber for this because they're in a box put them away because i wasn't using them i just didn't want them to dry out so this is my really attractive box of inkers uh, is it that one no it's this one okay so this is my one of my cotton reel jobbies so I just, you know, I think actually I might have used two different colours of ink on here. I think maybe there's some vintage photo going on as well, but I'm not really sure. But that's okay. Looks all right now. That's better. Right. That's better. Okay, so let's find something to go across here. Let's move you guys out of the way because I'm not using you at the moment. What have we got in my box of stiff scraps? Now this paper's quite it's quite thick already, so I don't think we need anything too sturdy. It's not big enough. I mean, what would be really good would be to cover it with a bit of my collage but I have no idea if I still have any uh, I can't go and print any off because I've got so much here already that I could use so I don't know Ooh, what's this there we go that'll do maybe this is why I never get anything finished because I just faff about doing stuff I mean I'm not a faffer really well if any of my family are watching this they probably disagree but I don't consider myself to be a faffer. I don't really kind of, you know, take a, a long time over. Well, okay, maybe I do. Maybe that is why I never get anything finished. 
but I like doing things thoroughly, you know? If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. So I kind of feel like if I'm going to do something, I need to do it properly. And maybe that's my downfall because I'm taking too long to do stuff so it never gets finished. Maybe that's my problem. I don't know. Could be. Right. Okay, so let's just trim this off. good job of trimming around there Helen. Let's give that another try shall we? This is the problem with being a lefty. Well, one of the problems with being a lefty is one the scissors are the wrong way unless you buy expensive lefty scissors. Also would help if I put my glasses on because then I might actually be able to see what I'm doing. So, right so do I cover this guy before I stick it down or shall I wait until after I've stuck it down? Um, I think I'm going to wait till after I've stuck it down, so do about half of it. So I'd be really interested to know if any of you guys have um, lost your crafting mojo, and if so, what did you do to get it back? Because although, you know, this is fun and I think it's helping, and also it helps just to sort of speak out loud sometimes, because I only live with my children so I don't really have anyone to talk to I mean the dog sort of just looks at me as if I've gone a bit mad if I try and have a discussion with him um, but he is a chocolate Labrador so you know can't expect him to understand anything really uh, so yeah sometimes it, it it does help just to kind of say things out loud normally it's my poor sister who gets lumbered with me whinging on at her but she's not here at the moment she's in Turkey on holiday with our friend Jenny honorary sister Jenny um, so she's not even here for me to bang on to now I've got a problem here which is that because this has got a bit of a, a wany edge it's gonna be really difficult for me to cut around that didn't think this through did I uh, what can we do I think what I might do actually is just put some ink on it just to get rid of that Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. Just to get rid of that nasty plainness. That's better. And then if I just whack some vintage photo as well around the very edges. There we go, that's better. I think we also need a little bit of. Should have done this before you stuck it on, Helen. Never mind. We live and we learn. There we go, it's quite nice. Um, right, now, can I find anything to use as a closure for this little guy? Bear with, I'll see if I can find some Velcro. Okay, you ready to be amazed? Ta-da, I found some. Considering the current state of my craft room, it's actually a miracle that I was able to find some Velcro. So, if we just cut, this is self-adhesive, allegedly. Um, but I don't know how many years I've had this, so probably the stickiness is not going to be magnificent. So I think, oh, come here. What we're going to have to do is um, give it a helping hand with some extra glue, which, to be fair, I'd do anyway, to be honest. So. Okay, so let's... Which side do we want? So I think we want the fluffy on this side and the hooky on this side. Is that right? I'm not sure. I don't know if there's a law or a rule about which way around you men to do it, but anywho, my mum always told me to put the two bits of Velcro together so that you ended up with them in the right place. So good advice, mum. Thank you. So we'll just, oh, more glue than I wanted really, but never mind. It's fine. It dries clear. It's all good get it out with my new manicure right and then peel this off one of the side effects that I found because I've got low iron I've got anemia is I 
shaking. I've never had shaky hands before in my entire life, but look, I can't even hold the glue bottle straight. I've never suffered with shaky hands. My sister suffers terribly with shaky hands, but it's not something that I've ever had a problem with before. So I'm hoping once the iron tablets I'm taking kick in, that that is something that will just disappear. There we go. Right, so, so I'm going to peel this apart without pulling it off because it won't have had a chance to dry yet. There we go. Hey, that was good. What do you think? I'm quite pleased with that. I think that's worked out quite nicely. So, so we did two, well, three things. Look through my box of unfinished projects. Some of them weren't unfinished. I re found some old gems that I'd forgotten about, which, you know, makes me want to go back to perhaps doing this and certainly doing some more in here as well as working in my main journal which I've got loads of ideas for but I just haven't had the motivation um yeah so that's really helped me I think but I would like to know what do you do when your crafting mojo has done a runner um if you've got any links to any other youtube videos that I could watch then that would be great um if you'd be interested to watch a series on or a video on sort of crafting junk journaling basics just like your real basic supplies and and resources that you need in order to be able to do junk journaling then let me know that as well and other than that thank you so much i've i do feel so much better and hopefully i'll be able to carry on with this and feel a bit more creative and inspired so thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and if you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it that would be brilliant and it would really help lift my mood. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye!